Hey folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm vlog today. My voice is a little hoarse today. I just got back from a little road trip and went up in the mountains of Asheville, North Carolina, near Justin Rhodes and Art and Bree, even though we didn't get to do a vlog with them. So the goal was to get the lawn mowed before I left, like most vacations. Well, we had an issue with the radiator, and today I'm gonna show you how to repair a radiator. We're gonna take these welding brazing rods and these are aluminum welding brazing rods and map gas this is my first time using map gas this is my first time doing a repair on a radiator but it can't be that daggone hard so come along today we're going to show you how to fix a hole in your radiator with an aluminum rod and some map gas all right Woo! First, let's show you the problem here. So when I got ready to leave town Friday, I hopped on my zero turn mower and this is a John Deere 777. It's a 60 inch, 27 horsepower, water cooled John Deere mower and it's a zero turn. So when I got ready to leave town, I jumped on that thing and I was gonna bust out some mowing. I can really get some mowing done. It takes me about eh, 45 minutes an acre to mow. So I can really get some mowing done. I was gonna whip it all out. Well, I smelled something funny. You know, whenever you're on the tractor, whenever you're on the mower, you have hearing protection in, but you're always listening. You're always checking the feel of everything and you're always smelling. And I started smelling antifreeze and I knew what was up. So I shut the mower down and I looked back and there was antifreeze kind of dripping out from under the machine and spewing from a tiny little hole right here, okay? We're going to get you some more close-ups of that hole, but I jumped in here before I went on my vacation and I took my lawnmower down so I knew what my problem was and I researched all weekend on good ways to fix it. There are several different ways we can fix this little hole. The first way is take it to somebody else, but that's not really what Stony Ridge Farmer is all about, so we're not going to take it to somebody else. This tiny little peewee radiator has green paint on it somewhere because the radiator costs six hundred and ninety eight dollars the radiator is six hundred and ninety eight dollars so thanks john deere for having a proprietary brand and a proprietary radiator that i can't get anywhere else other than john deere and i have to pay seven hundred dollars for a sixty dollar radiator i might as well if i can't repair this i might as well just mount a race car radiator system and a fan blower on the top of this thing because it would be cheaper than going to buy a tiny john deere radiator that's not right, okay? Even though this is a John Deere radiator, it's not made out of any special material that we can't fix ourselves, so we're gonna show you how to make a repair on the radiator. I'm gonna take you over here on the zero turn tractor and show you where I took it out and what caused this issue. It was a really simple issue and I probably could have solved it had I known it was going on, but let's go over here and I'll show you. Okay, so I've got the seat propped up on the mower here. It props up with a little rod and this is my reservoir for my hydraulic fluid, my battery, all that stuff. And here is the fan, and right here was the culprit. So this little bolt right here had come loose. And you can see it just shaking loose right there. I didn't tighten it because I wanted to show you. That little bolt had come loose, and we'll check all four of them. If you look up here, this bolt's loose also. So we'll have to tighten all these bolts up, and I'm going to put a touch of blue Loctite on these bolts. I'm going to move them out and put a little Loctite on because there's no reason for them to be loosening up and punching a hole in my radiator. So that's what the problem was. This guy was loose, punched a hole all the way through the radiator. So the gods of farm and tractor figured out that I was headed out of town and they wanted to screw me up. So they threw me a curveball with a hole in my radiator. So let's get this radiator. I'm gonna show you what we do. I'm gonna clean it up really good. I've done a little bit of research on this and we're gonna solder up the little holes. They're tiny, tiny little holes and I'll get you some good close-ups. And that way, if you ever have an issue with your radiator, you can repair it or you can take it to a repair shop, but that's not what Stony Ridge Farm is all about. All right, so our little kit came with brazing rods and we just picked this up at our local auto parts store and it comes with an assortment of different brazing rods. And on the back here, it tells you all about what brazing rods do what, blah, 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 blah. I think we're gonna use the aluminum soldering rod, ideal for sealing holes and aluminum boats, gutters and siding, uh, da, 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 da. high strength and long service. So we're gonna go ahead and give this a shot. It says, color of the rod is aluminum colored. So, <laughs> I 
what color is aluminum colored? There's three silver, actually there's two silver rods. So it's one of the two silver rods. I would say it's probably the lightest one because the other one is nickel. This is our buddy. Slip all these guys back in here because we never know when we might use them. Have them in the shed. We'll fire up this map gas and this is map gas. Map gas is a little bit different than regular uh, propane gas in that it burns a lot hotter temperature. And what I want to do is I want to test this stuff out and see how quickly it burns. So let's do that first. I'd imagine the heat's going to travel up this thing pretty darn quickly. See how quickly it starts to melt. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Now we know. It's going to melt pretty quickly. The biggest issue here is to make sure that the site that I'm going to use this on is really, really clean. So we've already brushed it off, but I'll show you what we're doing. We're just taking a little wire brush and we're scrubbing on it and then spray it down with some brake cleaner that evaporates really quickly and it should remove all the contaminants. So here's the spot on our radiator and there are just two tiny little pinholes. I'll point them out real quickly. The two tiny pinholes, there's one right there and then there's one right there. And all we're going to do is fill in those two little pinholes. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna scrub it good with a little wire brush in all directions, okay? And make sure we've got all our contaminants out of there. Then we're gonna take a can of brake parts cleaner and we're gonna spray it, clean it up. Give that a few seconds to dry. All right, we're gonna turn on our map gas and ignite it. Then we'll turn it down just a little bit and we'll start heating this area up. It should burn off any contaminants also. You can see those little contaminants burning away. So you guys get a good idea. There's one hole here, one hole here, and one hole here. Very, very tiny little hole. See where that bolt rubbed? It's just a circle right here where the bolt rubbed. So we're gonna heat this area up really good and we'll use this brazing rod and we'll fix this spot. So I'm getting an education in map gas today and that map gas will not work. We're going to set the radiator upright. It will not work if you turn the bottle upside down and just kind of sputters and spits. So we're going to heat the radiator up. Now what we have to consider here is that the radiator is going to dissipate heat pretty fast and that's why we're using map gas where it's really hot. It'll burn hotter, it'll get hot faster and we can utilize this stuff really good. I don't think it's going to be a problem. I think it's going to be awesome. Ah, yeah, that thing gets hot quick. Okay. We're gonna get it hot again. This stuff really gets hot quickly. All right, there we go. There's one, one hole. There's our next hole. Okay. Whew. Guys and gals, if you've never used map gas, that stuff got hot quick. If you've never welded with aluminum or done any brazing, I suggest practicing. I don't know if I got the holes sealed up or not. It really, really got hot really quickly. Hopefully it filled in the holes. We're going to clean it up with the brush here a little bit and dress it up and make sure we've got a good seal. I'm going to run some water in it first and just plug it off and do a little pressure test and make sure we've got a good seal. I hope we do. So let me scrub it up real good, clean it up with my wire brush, and hopefully this mess worked. Still really, really, really hot. Fill those holes in good, but buddy, it got hot. Nope. That didn't seal anything up. Nope. It's just pulling right off. Yep, it just pulled right off. Plan A did not work. I took my little snippers and I just grabbed a hold of whatever we had here, stuck to it and just went boop and it popped right off. So did not seal at all. Didn't do a good job, didn't do the job. So I also have trusty plan B, Permatex steel weld. So with plan B, we're using a two part epoxy right here. And basically we're gonna mix it up. The little uh, container itself comes with a mixing tray, mixing tray. We're gonna go ahead and mix it in that little mixing tray 
right there and then we'll apply it with rubber gloves right to the spot that we're going to be working with this is plan b there is a plan c and that's hang up your spurs and take it to the radiator shop but i don't know i think it's worth trying it's worth trying to fix so i'm going to do it on my own let's try it out we're going to clean it up and i'll show you what we're going to do we're going to use the two-part epoxy now so we got our needle nose pliers and what we're going to do is we're going to get in here and we're going to pinch and clear out some of these little flutes that help to dissipate heat and really if we clear out this much of it it's not going to hurt anything i'll show you what we're going to do and that's where we'll get a good bite with our epoxy and hopefully not make a big mess let's do it i'll show you so our holes are right here i'm going to go in and i'm just going to pinch take this guy and just kind of pinch these guys out of the way make me a spot where I can grip to making a bit of a mess of this radiator but I just can't seem to swallow that pill that's expensive pill to swallow there we go all right we'll take our wire brush and we'll work in there real good clean it up take our parts cleaner our brake parts cleaner and we'll spray in here real good Rinse it off, we'll give that a little time to dry right there. And this is a two-part epoxy. I'm gonna squeeze some into here. There we go. Equal amounts, hopefully. All right. Now I have my nitrile gloves on here, so I'm just gonna stir it with my finger. Get it mixed up real good. So our epoxy's all mixed up here, and I'm just gonna take the end of a big old fat zip tie, and I'm gonna use that as my applicator right here and we don't have to put much on there just want to make sure we get it all on in the right place even if i do make a big mess at least i've saved some money and if it fails it'll be okay i can take it to the radiator shop and this is what the guys at the radiator shop were going to do but probably to a little more detail right around there we're going to make a bit of a mess that's okay it's my mess it'll be all right got one spot covered and that right there is the next spot Make sure we're covering it really well. We're going to goop it on here pretty thick. Hopefully it gets a good bite and it stays. Goop it on there nice and thick. Might look rough for now, but that's okay. That's it. We're going to give this 24 hours per the directions to dry up and set up. I'll show you the end result. It looks pretty good. I'm kind of happy with it. Hopefully that'll patch the radiator and get us out of this pickle. So we'll come back tomorrow and we'll check it. We'll run some water down in there and see if we're getting any water leaks. And if not, we're going to put it back on. I'll show you how we reinstall it and we'll fire it up, fill it up with antifreeze and see how she does. Next time you see me, we'll be tomorrow. All right. Day two. We're here on day two, guys. So everything's set up. The epoxy has set up right here and you can see it's kind of covered the holes that were in there and i actually went over here and i dabbed a little bit on this area too it's not really going to affect the cooling of this engine this is pretty much big enough to handle like a four-cylinder honda engine so we'll go ahead and we'll get busy here we're going to reassemble this thing but first we're going to run a little bit of water into our radiator here and put a little pressure on it and make sure that we are going to hold water on our sites that we repaired so let's fill it up with water this is going to serve as a bit of a makeshift little pressure test but Make sure water's not just going to spew right out of it. There we go. So the most important thing we need to address first is the whole root cause of all this problem. And that's these stupid little bolts getting loose. So we're going to snug them down nice and tight. I know I said I was going to put Loctite on them, but really it's not necessary. Just need to be tightened down appropriately. We'll get everything tight so it doesn't fall apart on us again. Now every nut and every bolt that we took out of this thing we put in this big wash basin and that way we'll have it. We'll go ahead and just reassemble it in reverse order. We're going to place the radiator in place here and then there's a couple brackets around the outside edge. We'll pop all those in together, screw it all together and then we'll head out and fire it up and see if we can get to mowing. And that'll be basically our pressure test. If it fails again, it only takes about 15 minutes to pull this thing back out and then we'll take it to the radiator shop. But I feel pretty confident that I've got a good seal with that epoxy. So let's get busy getting everything back together.
Now the biggest hassle in reinstalling this thing was getting the lower radiator hose back in place correctly. Um, it's really, really tight quarters down here getting all this stuff. So got to be sure we get everything back right and tight. Come on, buddy. Got him all lined up. You just don't want to go on there. Upper radiator hose is no problem. Make sure we got that guy on nice and tight. Make sure everything's lined up right, because if it's not, we're going to be cutting holes again. Come on, little buddy. You can do it. Now, before we completely reassemble this thing, we'll go ahead and we'll refill it with uh, antifreeze. I've got some 50-50 antifreeze. We'll go ahead and refill it with antifreeze and let it run for a bit. Guys, right now I ask you, click that like button. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe and I appreciate having you here. Thanks a lot for watching. All right, pre-diluted antifreeze here. What's a day in the shop without making a good mess? Whew, there we go, there's our mess. Let's get her all fired up here. PTO off. Brake locked. Come on, baby. This thing sounds like a Harley. Come on, baby. Woo! So I left the fan shroud off of this thing on purpose so that I could see whether it was blowing fluid. We're gonna get this thing up to running temperature, give it some, I guess, get a little rough with it and make sure that we're not gonna blow another hole through this thing. I think it's gonna seal, but Keep your fingers crossed. just that easy that's how you repair a hole in your radiator it's not leaking or anything like that I am gonna leave the shroud off for a little while and mow the yard but I think everything's gonna hold up great pretty awesome so if you got a hole in your radiator and you need to repair it there's several videos out there but I think this is the only one that kind of gives you detail on how to repair the metal portion of the radiator and a little bit of failure too so thanks a lot guys Please don't forget to pound that like button, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you coming to the Stony Ridge Farm with me today. Now I gotta get busy because my grass is like knee high. <laughs> Let's get busy. All right, thanks. See you next time. Woo! We saved 698 bucks. We'll Rad. come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife, bring your kids. We're living life here and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Check, 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 check. So the most important thing we need to address is having the right size socket. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and put the wrong size socket on there. That'd be awesome. Woo!